it's Lisa. Today I have three photos uh, for my favorite activity. One of my favorite activities is scrapbook shopping. Um, I recently had the opportunity to scrap to shop at the Scrappy Chic store in Detroit and I wanted to commemorate that with a page uh, devoted to scrapbook shopping at a brick and mortar store because I don't get to do that very much, at least not independent stores. So my background is going to have a brick uh, sort of layout with small pa pieces of paper from several 6x6 six six paper pads that I had in my collection. You can see that pinwheel one's already been cut up pretty good because uh, those those work out well for that for this type of thing of a cut up sort of background. The blue in my dress is probably going to be one of the more dominant colors and then the rest of it I can pick pretty much any colors I want. Uh, the little photo I took in their lobby does have some greens and yellows and things there that I can uh, pull from as well. What I plan to do with that photo is use one of these frames from Maya Road that I bought while I was on the trip. I like these frames because not only do you get the frame, the photo frame in several sizes, but you get the part that pops out of the middle so you have a nice neat square there of chipboard that you can use for other projects. So I have the three photos, a little bit of journaling, and a couple of embellishments uh, to kind of uh, fill everything in. I'm going to leave some space between the um, little pieces of paper for the brick and perhaps put some washi tape over them. And with the idea of leaving space, I thought something that would make it easier to adhere all these and line things up would be to use some ledger paper. So I found three whole sheets of ledger paper, so much of mine is cut up for uh, journaling, but I did find a few sheets that I need to decide between here in a few moments. First let's pull out um, the different pattern papers that I want to use. I can use quite a variety of them. Things that have a lot of contrast though, like that white background, that's probably not something I want. I want some more small print type of things to keep it from getting too busy. From the Pinwheel and the Amy Tangerine Ready, Set, Go line. I'm using throwing some grays in here. It works with the um, paper, or there were grays in both lines and also works with the photos. I like that little blue floral and I like those globes since we were traveling and this parquet brick pattern again kind of goes with being in a store. So those seem to be working out well with the photos. And I've got one other pad here from my mind's eye. I want to see if there's anything in that one to pull out. A few more reds. I didn't feel like I had quite enough reds and there was also some gray there. So now these are ready to be cut um, and the size of these I believe was two inches by one inch. And I'm looking at the ledger papers to see which one I want to use. There's one from My Mind's Eye and then this one from October Afternoon, it was actually, or excuse me, from Crate Paper, it was actually part of a Christmas collection and it's what I really thought I would use but it had a lot of green on it and I didn't really end up using a lot of green. So the My Mind's Eye Paper looks like it's going to be the winner for uh, the, the best one to use and it ends up working out really well as you'll see in a moment when we start to lay out the squares. Um, I thought I would mat my photos just on a gray background, that kind of, or either gray or brown, deciding which color that I want to use. Since I had so many gray papers, you'd think that would be the direction I'd be going. Uh, but I also have that parquet paper, and the background paper tends to look better with the brown mat. So I decided to stick with the uh, brown. I have those matted, and I've cut up my squares again in 2 inch by 1 inch uh, squares. And I, the way I lay things out is I put all the blues together, all the reds together, all the yellows together, and then I start mixing. It's the way I decorate a Christmas tree. I put all the ornaments of one color in one batch and, and another, all the other ornaments of another color in another batch and then I can spread them out uh, randomly across my tree or garland or whatever I'm doing. So I'm doing the same kind of process for these and it just so happens that this paper works out to where the little squares fit within the columns of the ledger and the ledger is balanced with the same amount of space on each side of the design. I'm going to use the lines, the horizontal lines, um, to help me line things up, but it doesn't matter to me that a piece of paper fits right on top of a line. I just, just the lines will help me keep them straight. That's really all I'm, all I'm trying to do, because otherwise they'd go all over the place. I, I can't keep things straight unless I have a ruler or something to go by. 
kind of looking to see how it's going. Okay, I have an arrangement here and kind of seeing how the photo looks and if I want to move any of the squares around. Also, um, getting a feel for my title because the title is going to be in blue letters. They, some of the papers, like this one here, is awfully busy, and then I've got some that are they're blue, and the blue letters won't show up on that. So I'm going to do a little swapping out. Yeah, that blue paper is going to have to go somewhere. Swap it with a gray. And I want to try and see if uh, they look good with some distress ink around the edge. Kind of hoped they didn't, so I wouldn't have to ink all of them, but they do. They look a lot better with that distress ink. I don't distress everything, but th these just kind of needed it because the background paper had a lot of distressing on it. So really, it did not take that long. It took about 10 to 15 minutes max to cut all of these and lay them out and distress the edges. So it really wasn't that time consuming. And what I'm showing here is how I alternated the space. It's just a brick pattern. But I ended up starting at the bottom and working my way up when I was adhering them because that way my hands didn't brush the, if I worked from the bottom, those were, were stuck down so my hands wouldn't brush them as I was moving up the uh, page wouldn't catch them with my sleeve, I guess I should say. And it just so happened that they that every other row fit perfectly within those ledger columns. That was just luck. Okay. And now we've got our um, frame and I want to match that wood grain as much as I can. I've got a couple of shades of brown paint here or a brown paint and a tan paint to kind of tone it down a little bit so it won't be, it, the brown was too red and I needed to keep it from being so reddish. And I was sort of successful on that. And I probably should have been working on something besides paper. I wasted a lot of paint here. Um, but just using some cheap craft paint to paint this in. And I'm going to stamp it with a wood grain stamp and then put some um, gloss over it so it will really have a nice picture frame kind of effect. I love painting chipboard. Raw chipboard is one of my favorite uh, things to work with. All right, so that's dry, and I'll go over it with some brown ink. Stays on what I happen to have at the time in a good brown. And especially since I'm going to be going over it with a gloss, I need something that won't run when I apply Mod Podge or gel or whatever I put over the top of it. So the stays on ink will do that. So I got a little bit of a wood grain effect there. And I'm going to go over it with a glaze. And what I did was I just mixed some Faber-Castell uh, gel with um, some vintage photo ink refill. And that makes a nice brown glaze. And that will further tone it down. It, it ended up kind of a taupey, slightly reddish, I don't know. It ended up a weird shade of brown. This will help it get back to a more normal shade of brown. need to get some better brown paints, I think, in my collection. Yep. Give that a few minutes to dry before we assemble. And now we have this just glued the uh, photo into the back of it after I trimmed it down. I'm going to put my letters on, get those spaced out. The one kind of thicker that I find that really sticks are these foam thickers. Um, so I'm putting them directly on the layout instead of putting them on um, wax paper first because I, I only had the really the main one main word. I figured I could space it out there. I'll have to do just a little bit of adjusting to get everything in. I also have these. Um, yellow flowers from Basic Gray. I'm sorry they went off the screen here a little bit. You'll see them in a moment. I've had these a long time and they ended up working beautifully color-wise with this since I needed two embellishments. There they are. You can see them better. I'm going to put one down at the bottom. They're very sticky. So once they go in place, they're, they're going to stay there. And those I think will uh, go in nicely with the sort of fun look of this layout and the whole idea behind it. And I'm trying some different washies here. I'm not sure about these really bold colors. 
yellow looks pretty good, but that red and that blue I think are just too busy and they compete a little bit too much with the uh, papers. The gray stripe is working, so I think we'll use a little bit of this. Just here and there to sort of unite the, the layout, and I'm putting a little bit down here underneath the title, kind of fill in that right lower right corner, and a little across the top of the photo. I still have my journaling block to put on. Okay, and my page is almost complete. I've got my blue that matches my dress, but I don't have any blue anywhere else in the layout, and I felt like I needed some. Unfortunately, I didn't have any blue enamel dots. So what I did was take some uh, pearls, and I colored them with this pit brush marker from Faber-Castell, and that's a permanent ink. They did take a little while to dry on this. I ended up leaving them. I had to go out for something, and I ended up leaving them a couple of hours, and they dried nicely, and then I can just glue them on. But uh, the pearling, pearl, pearlization, I guess you'd say, sort of shines through, and they really did uh, look nice when they were finished. So I just took some half pearls, colored them with a, a pit, permanent pit brush marker from Faber-Castell, and then I'm going to glue them on with um, glossy accents. Kind of figuring out where they're going to go. And that helps, I think, a lot to bring that blue color in to everything. Because other than the papers and the title, I didn't have any blue in there. All right, now we have the page finished. The washi tape in place. Let's take a look at the sketch. We've got our two photos, one a little bit larger than the other but you could use two 4 by 6s here as well. Uh, my two flowers, brick background with different strips of washi tape, the journaling tucked in there to the side, and the frame around the photo from the Meyer Road frame. So now you can get some close-ups. And that's our page. So thanks for joining me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the layout, and I'd love to have comments. Uh, if you have any or questions, please visit my blog for the sketch and to learn more about this uh, project. Thank you.